Uh, good morning here. It's uh, Friday uh, 3rd, <laughs> about 10 a.m. We're up and running. Uh, just want to give you a little uh, uh, talk, a little uh, uh, vlog, if you will, over how it's going here, what we're going to be doing. So, like I said, it's uh, Friday today. It's going to be raining most of the day. Let me come forward a little bit too far back. And uh, so... Uh, I worn out the tourist again. She says, I'm not going anywhere today. It's raining. It's raining and <laughs> your feet hurt. So I uh, just wanted to give Jaylen a minute to talk about what she's doing, how she's feeling, how she's enjoyed it or not enjoyed it. Your turn. My special guest. <laughs> <laughs> it's been interesting going to the different cities. Some yeah. of them, have they been villages or just cities? Dorps. <laughs> The Dutch word for a village is a dorp. Okay. <laughs> anyway, and the architecture, the different streets. Watch out for the bicyclists. They'll run you over. All the time. You're constantly in danger from being run over by all kinds of things. Even when we were up in Kroninga and I was walking with Florian. I don't think you were with us, but uh, he's very much aware of the danger of bicyclists. And the bicyclists have their own little path. It's not on the road. It's very separate. <clears throat> and they have their own traffic lights. Don't walk in their path. And they have the right of way. <laughs> and Florian stepped into this busy street. We had they had the stop light. The bikes were supposed to stop. And a motorized a broom feet. It's a little tiny. He says electric. I think it was a, a gas. But anyway, he damn near hit him. And he's like, that's never happened before. He says, oh, they're trying to kill me. <laughs> Just I, I expect to be killed. But he says, yeah, <clears throat> no, no way to escape the danger. And there are no straight roads. You want to ride somewhere in the car, you go. You better have Google Maps. Google Maps is an absolute necessity. And uh, I have Google Maps uh, set to be speaking in Dutch. So I'm hearing Dutch directions and Dutch street names. And so uh, my assistant driver is always telling me the same thing often in English. And then I get confused because I hear it in two languages, which I cannot do. <laughs> we don't get lost very far. We you know, had to go around about a time or two. Or yesterday we went over to visit the SS Rotterdam. Google Maps took us down a street that had closed construction, and so we had to do a do an about face and kind of stuff. But yeah, you know, we uh, went in a big circle. It wasn't that long. It took about five ten minutes to go down the street and back and make the turn. <clears throat> and uh, well, we eat here or in the apartments uh, or sandwiches or leftovers and dinner out at night. Most of the time, but not always. Uh, this building here is right downtown in the center. Uh, I guess it's kind of close to a center of town. Rotterdam is very big. And the building's uh, in a block with all just many restaurants and stores, so very much a, a downtown district. It's loud sometimes during the day, and you can hear like loud motorcycles or car races. Sounds like big V8s, but 10 o'clock, it's dead quiet. And then in the morning, you're woken up by... Some very angry seagulls. And oh, my turn. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, walking. It's interesting going to the smaller villages and seeing more of the <clears throat> traditional housing and the canals. Um. Howda. Howda. Yeah. Gouda. Howda. I don't try to just... Anyway, we went there and went huge city building. The, the stout house, yeah. The city um, stout with a big plaza around it and all the shops around it was interesting. Well, you didn't go into Groningen, did you? Groningen is the same thing. The city building is always in the center of the plaza. And in Groningen, the one side is a church and the other side is the city building. But they look like churches. Um, Utrecht, too. Well, you didn't walk down in Utrecht, either. So, yeah... Um, I went to, we went to the yeah. house you were born in. Mm -hmm. We drove past the house that your grandparents lived in, um, your mom's parents. Yeah, yeah. Um, and where your... Uh, my opa and oma Yeah, lived. your opa and oma lived. And, and my dad's uncle. <clears throat> and where mom Ben Bray went to school. But I walked right down in the big central district you walked around the outside and we took the the canal ride around it mm -hmm. the, the, the first thing that uh, i told jaylen she didn't need to pack a hair dryer would every place has a hair dryer and the necessities 
and we get to uh, Utrecht and there's no hair dryer in this apartment which is also you know in an older 1950s um, built uh, building and, and I'm not going out without my hair <laughs> it's for, I, and I'm dead just dead dead tired and we want to go out in the morning so I got to deal with this now so I have to send a message offer to the um, the guy that runs the Airbnb and I go where can I buy a hair dryer and he goes it's just down into the shopping district it's named this and it's a short walk well I don't believe any Dutch person that says it's a short walk because a short walk minimum is a half hour one way <laughs> you know so I had to walk clear through this mall, find a hair dryer, and bring it back, which took me more than an hour. <laughs> but yeah, no way was I dealing with a very angry lady in the morning whose hair dryer doesn't work. An eight-minute walk for free parking turned into a 45-minute <laughs> tour of the city. Uh, even with Google Maps walking, <laughs> not used to how you say uh, the way the navigator works. It tells you to turn right or left, but it there may be an alley there in a car you kind of turn it right away and walking you may not turn right away <laughs> or anyway yeah i've uh, i've had an interesting uh, walk about town because i missed <laughs> where i was going and there's no it's all cloudy and there's no shadows i have no idea what time it is i'm dead tired or <laughs> so easy to get lost walking uh, as you first come into any city but yeah um, using google maps to walk navigate is a little different than car so and in Rotterdam, we're parked in a parking garage. We're on the fourth floor today that has no elevator working. So we get back. It's a hole. <laughs> so we get back from touring the Rotterdam and then we have to park and then we have to go downstairs and we're already tired and it's pretty hot yesterday. So we're just, you know, dragging our butts from just coming down the parking complex over here to the apartment. And, uh, yeah, and the apartments are always it's something quirky in every apartment. In this apartment, I don't know if I did a video, but the toilet is the door, the the toilet room, which is different than the shower room in the bedroom. The toilet room's over here. I can't close the door if I have business, sitting business to do. I can't close the door. And the light switches are always a mystery. Everywhere we go, there's some light that we go, how the hell do you turn this on or off? Or something is broken and... You know, they just deal with it. And there's, there's not a comfortable couch in the whole country. This couch here, I got two pillows behind me. Other the back is slanted. You know, <laughs> I don't like it here. There, it's like this. So, yeah, I can't get comfortable. Finally, I just give up. I just go lay in bed because I can't get comfortable on the couch. Every bed has been different. Every pillow has been different. I'm sure. And this bed, in this apartment, she, is, she calls it a Japanese-style bed. So it's like this far of the floor a little lift and then a big plank that sticks out for the bed of sharp corners so you can walk into and the bed is not thick but it's comfortable uh but yeah it's too low to the ground it's like you have to do a, a full body squat to stand up and after walking all day too tired for that just leave me here roll me out of bed and i'll finally crawl to the bathroom or something and the kitchen is tiny i, I don't remember if we, i did a tour of this building but i will if i haven't I probably did. So anyway, our plan, we have been Utrecht for four days or so, then Groningen for three or four days there, here in Rotterdam in this one apartment for five or six days. So it's Friday, we'll stay tonight, then we'll move not very far to Den Haag, The Hague, which is closer to the beach. And I think the weather will be okay for a few days. It's supposed to get better. Well, we don't mind a nice cool day. There's no air conditioning, so... And the heating system sucks. <laughs> you, you know, you you prefer this, it to be a little bit cool than hot because in this uh, hot apartment here is just miserable. This building is so old that it is registered heat with hot water. Oh, that's the other thing. Watch out for the hot water in the faucets because it'll burn your skin off. Yeah. And high pressure, real high pressure. And the faucets, you know have been uh, not maintained or something. In every place, the faucets are a little wanky and then out comes the hot water. And... Most of the other buildings, well, all the other buildings we have stayed in, they the government came through and offered discount to put in in-floor heating. So all the other buildings we've been in have had the in-floor heating where this one's got the register. And the only way you can, it's either on or it's off. There's no in-between on this one. 
and uh, you have to go into one of the a closet here to throw the water valve open. I suppose you could probably turn it half open if you want it less. No, nope. she says it's on or off. On or off. Well, just, anyway, <clears throat> so when we first got here, it was cold, and the bedroom was super cold, and uh, not enough bedding, and I still suffer from body heat problems from the medication and stuff, and it takes five hours for the room to come up the temperature to what we're, we're comfortable with, but no Dutch person ever heats the bedrooms. So I said, how do I turn the heat on in the register in the in the bedroom because the valve, I didn't want to break it, it felt stuck. She goes, I don't know, I've never turned it off. And the first apartment in Utrecht, we came in, it, the window was open, the whole apartment was just for us super cold. And so we go to Truce's house and same thing, oh, no, we always keep our windows in the bedroom open. You know, it's for summer it's too hot and for winter we like it cold. And, uh, I didn't take a picture of it, but the stairs in both uh, Michael's and Sandra's house and Teresa's house are multi-level houses, but the stairs are these tight spirals, and you can and they're not the steps aren't hardly wide enough to you can stand on it. But. You can get the ball of your feet on there as you go up, and if you when you come down, you come down backwards. It's very much like being on the ships. Uh, up and down. It was worse than the ship. And so, Time I, and Truce could do it. Truce had a, an electric lift chair to help her out, but she was a, she, she did it on her own and seemed okay with it. But like uh, we had to hold on for dear life, and there are no handrails in Truce's house. She had the handrails taken off for her electric lift. So it was like that, oh, this scared the shit out of both of us. That's why I used the rail of the chair for the lift. Yeah, you had to reach down for the rail of the chair, but it wasn't like normal. I mean, that's a uh, very typical in a Dutch house to have these tight. Houses are narrow and deep because you get taxed because of the width of the front and not the square footage of the house. And so people build these deep houses with multi-stories and that forced them to make these tight spiral staircases. So anyway, uh, for Jalen, it's a, it's a down day again. Every other day is a down day. <laughs> I may go out and get lost in the subways, which I've done a couple times. Subways or trains or... <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, and uh, yes, the day before yesterday, we had Emmy, Amy, my tutor. Uh, I met her downtown by the. Uh, I thought it was Amanda. Uh, Amanda, Amanda, Amy, Amanda. No, it's Amy. Well, it's short. Amanda is her longer name, but Amy is oh. her short name. Amy, Amanda, same thing. Uh, Amy, and uh, he said, "Meet me by this place." You probably saw the video of the uh, the butt plug gnome, and they, it's supposed to be a Santa. I get out of it, come up out of the subway, and I'm like, okay, I understand the art here. But, eh. she, then I got a message from her: meet me by the butt plug gremlin, <laughs> butt plug gnome. I'm like, okay, I know where you are. <laughs> so we took a walk. Uh, we decided we would go to this little book store. Not really a store; it's a free library. Libraries, real libraries here, are you have to pay for a monthly fee or a subscription. There are no free libraries, but this is a, a free bookstore, a lace uh, hall. And you can just take four or five books of certain types, and they don't expect you to bring them back. People donate books. And uh, so we got to talk with the volunteers there, the Fry Willikers. <coughs> and uh, I start talking to them in Dutch, and they can tell I'm. I'm super good at Dutch, but the one guy immediately dropped into English and said, you speak really good Dutch. And so I went back to Dutch and I said, why are you speaking to me in English? And he goes, <laughs> and so it just turned on. That was such a funny experience. And you go into a restaurant and we've had restaurants where the people, the waiters don't speak Dutch at all. They speak English or Indian, uh, Hindus, or we have a restaurant just beneath us that's a uh, Thai place, Vietnamese place, and one guy was a Polish waitress. She didn't speak Dutch, spoke Polish and English. And then we had dinner later again last night, and the waitress was Asian descent, I don't know what, but uh, she said she only spoke English and Dutch. And, and a little bit of Thai. And a little bit of Thai, but so I was talking in Dutch as much as I could. So you never know. People here are always like, it's weird. In our own town, we often go to places and no one speaks Dutch. In Rotterdam, that's and in Amsterdam, that's also true. But we saw that also in uh, in Kinkronia. All right. Well, that concludes today's interview. Uh, so.
So in an update, that would be nice just, just to sit and tell you what we're how's it going. So it's now, like I said, Friday. We have another week left. I think we leave next Saturday. And the grocery stores. <laughs> the grocery stores are interesting. They're everything. Nothing is big like the U.S. Everything is small. 100 milliliters, 200 milliliters bottles of milk or stuff. Small, small bottles of uh, mayonnaise or whatever condiments. Um, cash. Well, Albert Heijn requires content account or a, a Maestro card, which is a Dutch debit card that's different than a MasterCard. Other stores take visas and stuff. A few of them don't. Smaller restaurants don't take regular visa cards. I have enough euros uh, in my pocket to take care of most things. But <clears throat> yeah, the, the little stores we're visiting are inner city stores. There are big grocery stores out uh, in in the suburbs, but we haven't stopped into one. So I will find one along the way, I suppose, just to go wandering. They so, don't sell a dozen eggs. They sell the biggest carton. They sell is ten. Tens. <laughs> And you saw the, the, and you don't refrigerate them here. The yeah, you don't. Oh, that's true. You don't refrigerate. So I've opened either. a carton of eggs. Like there are feathers on my eggs, and uh, uh, if, you, and if, each, you, if you read the label, it says free range chicken, free range chicken. So and each each egg has a stamped. code number stamped on it. Yeah, probably the date it was dropped. It came out of the chicken's ass. I don't know what that date is. I don't know. So you go into the store, you buy a half loaf of bread for a day or two, you buy some sausages or worst or... You don't put butter in the fridge. Well, I don't put butter in the fridge at home either. If we're using it, it stays soft. So well, yeah. It's using... in the fridge in the grocery store. It's just, it's just normal <laughs> butter. Uh, but uh, prices, I don't really know. <laughs> we don't buy stores <laughs> like this at home. It could be more expensive. Um, but uh, So yogurt... Cereals, uh, breads, uh, lunch meats, and that kind of stuff we, we have on hand. And uh, so restaurants are often closed on Mondays here, which is kind of weird because they get supplies over the weekend, but then the suppliers don't come on Sunday. So the restaurants don't have food to sell on Monday or something. We don't know. We always just expect that uh, we'll have to fend for ourselves. We haven't had a problem, but we're, we're told we need to be aware that restaurants are not open on Mondays. All right, well, that's our report for today. Don't forget to subscribe and like.